I have to ask you guys to do something. Can you guys comment, please feed your kids in the comment section. Uh, I don't know why it's taking a child-free dog mom of three to say this, not sure, but apparently some, some people need reminders. And usually I say that's okay, but I don't think it's okay. Family channels, some love them, some have a lot of critique for parents who put their kids online for the world to see them crack an egg on their forehead. Two, three. Hey, that was a very nice. But the family that I've been seeing that seems to be getting the most critique is a family that has a channel name of Eight Passenger. And since I don't follow family channels, I never really heard of them until today because the mom of the family has been arrested. I've heard the name before, but I, to be completely honest, I thought it was a band. No, this is a family that seems to be a little cultish and many people have been worried for the children's safety for years and now after seven years, the authorities have gotten involved and they are cracking down. Ruby Frank is 41 years old. She has a husband named Kevin Frank and they launched their family YouTube channel, Eight Passengers in 2015. The channel was an inside view on the look of their lives with the two parents and their and their six children. Gary, Chad, Abby, Julie, Russell, and Eve, the tiniest one. And all of this cake took place in Utah and their channel amassed over 2 million subscribers. People were just interested in this in their life. So what did the eight passenger crew bring to the table? Well, their videos consisted of like the day-to-day -day life of, of this family, the Mormon way, well, according to them. I hope and I don't think that most Mormons are like this. I'm not sure. Do you know in every group there's the freaks and the freaks give the other people a bad name and of course the freaks get the most of attention because even if you guys say that you don't like drama, you actually do because the most dramatic videos are the ones that do well. On the surface, Frankie would bake sourdough bread. She would get her kids ready for school. She would make her husband's lunch. She would cook, clean, read the Bible and live life as good people and make music videos on the weekend. Well, you know you can't hide who you are forever and eventually the truth will come out or you'll get so comfortable in, a, in front of a camera because it's always there, they're always filming and then you are going to show exactly who you are and that's exactly what happened with Ruby and her husband. So they would give off this impression of devoted Mormons, you know, this just goofy family doing everyday things, but the critics, the critics were saying that they are one of the most evil families on the internet. They said Ruby and Kevin are evil incarnates, abusive to their kids. They are extremely hungry for fame and have no problem exploiting their children to reach that point of tons of money. The first round of controversies and speculations from the outsiders looking in was when Ruby punished the oldest son, Chad, for playing a prank on their brother, and she taught him a lesson by just taking away his whole room. Not for a day, not for a couple days or a week, for seven months. And that boy slept in the corner on a beanbag. For seven months, and then you give it back like a couple weeks ago. I don't think our viewers know that. You've been sleeping on a beanbag. I've been sleeping on a beanbag since October. <laughs> <laughs> and they gave my room back like two weeks ago. Anyway, another form of punishment that she would do for her tiniest little daughter, Eve, is uh, threaten to slice her one of her favorite little plushies or stuffed animals and then slice, cut the head off of the animal. If you cut one more thing in my house, <laughs> I'm going to take the scissors, look at me, and I'm going to cut its head off. Grandma, you be so and she would film this pretty much showing the audience that she sid from Toy Story. A few other things that I found. When Eve was four, she wet the bed and made her sleep on the bathroom floor. Ruby threatened to starve her children when they were play fighting. Okay, Russell. <laughs> I'm only gonna say it one more time and then you're gonna lose the privilege to eat dinner. Ruby also admitted on a podcast that she actually neglects Eve and Russell and on occasion she forgets to feed them. On one occasion, she got angry at Eve when she forgot to feed them and Eve found a pineapple. This upset Ruby. Periods, we all love them so much. It's the you know beginning of womanhood. Wouldn't you love if you started your first period and your mom ran into your room with a camera saying, hey daughter, let's talk about your period so two million people can, can talk about it too. And that left a lot of the people watching very just 
Ugh. And the oldest daughter, Sherry, was visibly uncomfortable while she was being filmed. You know that feeling when you break away from a group and then you start noticing little things or maybe everything, and you're like, huh, those people were actually really not good. Well, Sherry would go off to college and eventually she would just come to the realization that she wants absolutely nothing to do with her parents. And she decided to cut, slice, and abolish any form of communication with them because she said her parents' methods on disciplining and parenting seems to be way too much and not normal for little kids. It is true that I am in no contact with my immediate family and I do not support the extreme beliefs of connections. Please know that many are working on this situation and I hope one day we can be whole again. So Connections is the company where the mom of the eight passengers helps run with her co-host and partner, Jody. According to the Instagram page, you can get coached by these two women and learn to successfully navigate life and relationships. They give you parenting advice, they teach you how to talk to your kids, how to discipline them and be successful about it. Welcome to Connections. I'm Jody Hildebrandt. So glad you're with us. If you're like me, you've had pain in your life. It could be from a divorce, work conflicts, relationship issues with children, grandchildren, spouse, anxiety, depression, or fear that you don't understand, feelings that you're not enough or that you're unlovable. Connections is the solution. According to Sherry, the oldest daughter, the one who went through this Connections boot camp, the company where her mom helped run, would give parenting advice, thinks that it was extremely brutal, and the techniques is way too unrealistic for the kids to even really understand. And not only has Sherry spoken out about this, but multiple family members said that Ruby is insane and cut ties with her. I, we all did as much as we could legally and you don't know what you don't know. Connections has torn families apart. It is not a good group to be affiliated with and hopefully one day she will realize it. Well, as the years passed, more accusations came out and people made the allegation that Ruby was starving her kids. I just got a text message uh, from Eve's teacher and she said that Eve did not pack a lunch today and can I bring a lunch over to the school? And it would ease her discomfort if I came to the school with lunch. Um, but I, I responded and just said, Eve is responsible for making her lunches in the morning and she actually told me she did pack a lunch. So the natural outcome is she's just going to need to be hungry. This is the next line that really made people upset. And hopefully, Hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. So as I read about these people, the parents seem like they're all about consequences and choices. She says, her kids have all the choices in the world. They don't force them to do anything. The son decided to play a prank. They gave him a choice to sleep on the floor or sleep on the bean bag and he chose the bean bag. Six year old daughter chose not to make her lunch. The consequence was to starve. Look, I love responsibility, but damn, I forgot my lunch when I was 16. I forgot it a couple times when I was 24. I mean, you guys all remember, I think we've all forgot our lunch at least one or two times and it's kind of nice when your mom either brings it to you or she brings you McDonald's. I gotta remember that best thing. Or when someone steps in and the lunch lady just gives you a free lunch. But according to the father, it worked because six-year-old Ellie never forgot her lunch again. And this whole thing would blow up after channels like Tea Spill and Spill Sesh would cover the family blog and it brought a lot of uh, attention to the family and awareness and anger from the public. Even child services visited this family's home. And according to Ruby, these types of channels are malicious and they take out every bit of context and it's destroying their family. They knew what they were doing was out of context. They were purely seeking to throw hate. That was their only objective. A reasonable person would not have seen that video and thought, she's a child abuser. From someone who didn't follow these things when it was like in real time, it looks like a lot of people thought that. But I guess, you know, deciding who's a reasonable person or not is very subjective. I think a lady who thinks taking away your son's room over a tiny little prank and making him sleep on a beanbag in the corner for seven months, her idea of a reasonable person is gonna be a little bit different than mine. Well, eventually all the backlash would be too much and Ruby would stop posting and just delete her whole channel. I'm telling you, I was making millions and I left it because my kids were being hurt. With entitlement, they were being hurt. 
with people's advice and they didn't have a mother up the front saying, I don't care what the world's opinion is. This is the truth and this is where I stand. And fortunately, I had a chance. I had them in my home long enough to do it and I'm not going to lose them. They're seeing truth. They're accepting truth. They're loving truth. And so this is my passion is to invite you to stand in truth and put your opinions to the side for a minute because your kids are the target of distortion. Well, you know what? Turns out the videos that people were making weren't hurting her kids. The public opinion of her kids weren't hurting the kids. It was allegedly Ruby herself hurting the children because she recently got arrested for child abuse. YouTuber Ruby Frankie and her business partner Jody Hildebrandt. That bitch from the video clip who was acting like she knows all, she cares about people, she's so sweet, that one. Have been arrested for child abuse. Prosecutors now have a few days to file criminal charges. A judge would be assigned and it sort of starts the process. Frankie has more than two and a half million YouTube subscribers and with that much of a spotlight, criminal defense attorney Sky Lazaro says being in the public eye can be a challenge building a defense. But why? What happened? Was it the YouTube videos that exposed them? Was it the multiple people complaining? No. None of that ever. According to court documents, Frankie's 12-year-old son climbed out of a window of Hildebrandt's home and went to a neighbor's house with duct tape on his wrists and ankles, wounds, and was severely malnourished. Those documents also cite a YouTube video posted to Hildebrandt's channel just two days before the women's arrest. And they didn't just find one, they found another one. Evidence led officers to a nearby home where another juvenile was found in similar condition and taken to a local hospital for treatment. Four minors were taken into the care of the Department of Child and Family Services following a search of the home where the emaciated juveniles were found. And you know what the eldest daughter had to say about all of this on her Instagram? Finally. And that speaks volumes. And you guys know my past with my dad, but it makes me just very giddy when I see children break away from their parents who are the whole problem and leave and tell people about it. Me and my family are so glad justice is being served. We've been trying to tell the police and CPS four years about this and so glad they decided to finally step up. Kids are safe, but there's a long road ahead. Why did it take so long? That's my question. Anyway, so that's the story right now. I'm sure more will come out about the two ladies and how they helped people with the relationships with their children. And I'll make sure to update you guys so we can chat about it because those are probably the people that call me a bad person for not having children, but then they're up here duct taping, not feeding and making them sleep on beanbags. But I'm the horrible person and they're doing God's work. I mean, he did say be fruitful and multiply and they did. And I I feel like all six kids are gonna have a lot to say once they grow up. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you got to the end of the video, let me know by saying, feed your kids. If you choose to have children, make sure they're fed. Also, don't wrap them in duct tape. That's weird. Have fun in jail, ladies. To everybody else, bye. Wake up, honey, I made you breakfast. Fresh coffee and bagels too. A new day is waiting for us. We got lots of fun stuff to do. Let's go to the zoo and feed the monkeys. I can lend them your baseball cap. Let's make the day a very lot of fun. Growing up is just a trap.